Let me just get rid of all this. The funny, the adventurous, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yep. Well, and it, we we don't really have to do any of that because we didn't handicap it that way. We just uh, brushed over it out of deference to Jay. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. But you're going to talk about Fat Crack, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to talk about Fat Crack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, and then Florida Man Donnie, too, because uh, Florida Man Donnie sent me a whole uh, text message uh, just through a comedy of errors. He ended up... Uh, yeah, I saw that. He was at the race. Yeah, well, not only that, he ended up driving like four hours. He did the math on it. It's in our email. Let me look this up. So, I mean, it was it's it's a very Florida man, Donnie kind of a thing. So I'll read that as well. Cool. All right. So. Uh, all right, we all, we've only been recording for a minute, so go for it. Let me do a backup, just in case, since we don't know your internet. Hold on. Yeah, sure, but this is already going to be a disappointing show for some of our listeners, but they'll get over it. That's funny. You hadn't uh, had any internet problems until just now. <laughs> <laughs> shall it, we, it, sh- it, we should. We absolutely should. Let's kick this peg. <laughs> I, have, I have special intro music. Welcome to a special edition of Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it, built it yourself. Join Mental and I this week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes from the world of low dollar endurance racing, whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough. And Chrissy shows up. <laughs> we're sure you go giggle a little and learn even less. Is there anyone here to report to the paddock? Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And, and that's we, all we got this week. That's all we've got. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to a decidedly slimmer episode of our podcast. It's episode 105. And if you're not driving a car, don't forget your E1R bingo card. Links in our show notes. We haven't updated the phrases. As, and I would be interested to see if anyone gets bingo this week since it's just the two of us. Probably not. I don't know. Does anyone get bingo on a regular week? I can't tell. Ah, uh, compelling. Uh, so to... I, I, I just like to be, I'm very glad that you said decidedly slimmer because I am clearly the fat ass of the podcast. So <laughs> and I, I lost maybe a pound and I'm, I'm glad you noticed. You, you, you're looking good, Jeff. You're looking Thanks. really, really good. It, yeah. It, I'm it... only like 229 today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are you working on? Because I'm very excited to see the background behind you. Yes. I don't see a bartender. I don't no. see a, a, a... Go ahead. Tell everybody where you're at. Oh, I am broadcasting live from the new Three Pedal Mafia Gamblers Division headquarters in beautiful downtown Las Vegas. We are a mere 4.1 miles from the Bellagio Fountains in my new house because we are homeless no more. Before the show started, I gave Jeff the Skype video tour of the place. We'll talk a little bit more. Well, we'll talk about it through the entire show. Um, as you guys have noticed, Chris and Chrissy aren't with us. Now, Chrissy is doing one of her many business tours. I think right now she's through the west of the Midwest kind of a deal. Uh, if you follow our social media, she had dinner with the GD Yoman. Yeah, that looked very exciting. Exactly, exactly. And I think they're in Colorado right now up in the mountains where they don't get uh, telephone service, running water, or interwebs. So they're probably having a great time. Well, that's cool. And they're probably not next to a highway, which you seem to be. <laughs> Fair. It is. It, I, I am a block. Well, half a block from a, a main drag right here. And there's a stop sign two blocks over and there's a school zone. So everyone makes sure they stop at that four way stop sign. Mm, got it. We well, did we get do, some updates. Yes. Yeah, we, we do some updates from Chris and Chrissy. Uh, well, Chris and Chrissy, what are you working on? Hi, this is uh, Chris. And... Oh, no, no, we won't do that. 
Uh, Hello, so I'm you, Chris. I'm uh, strikingly uh, attractive. I have blonde hair, blue eyes, and a blessed existence, along with an NSX. Uh, Jim and Bill came down from Garage Heroes in training. We had a work weekend that Mental and Jeff didn't make it to. So we started race prep on our solstice, and it's progressed very well. We stripped the interior of the base. We worked on the base plates. The front bars are designed, but not yet completed. The Garage Heroes in Training BMW, which I set fast to slap on at Thompson, got a new passenger door bar so you can put in a possible or probable, rather proper, passenger seat because, well, they're in training and they need to have ride long for testing and track days. Chris, he also report. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, they also report. She'll punch us. The, It'll the, hurt. The Civic, they already bla- They already say they can't tell the difference between Chrissy and I anyway on the podcast. Uh, they also reported that the Civic is race prepped and ready to dominate. And, 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 and we're giving those guys a hard time. They actually did have a very productive race weekend. And Chris has been working on that Civic a lot. And it's it's the last 20% to bring that car up to 100%. And it's just little tweaks here and there. And when, when she types that the Civic is ready to dominate... I am really jealous that I am not going to make it to New Hampshire. I am so jealous. Actually, she just said race ready. I editorialized the ready to dominate <laughs> part. Fair so, enough. I, I think that I, I think is going to be amazing. I, I think I think anyone who says their car is going to dominate pretty much means that they're not going to do well. Fair enough. So. But the only thing that stopped that car at Thompson was a chunk of safety wire and a fuel injector. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know what? You're always going to have bugs to work out. Well, well, and then again, like we always talk about, it just perfect, perfect buys you the lottery ticket. Uh, so, Jeff, it looks like, and this is shocking, you've got some news. Yeah, I do. Get ready for this. Are you excited? I had an entire weekend off. Whoa! Sun! 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 <laughs> uh, but being that it was the first weekend off in a little bit more than a month, uh, I couldn't exactly get a hall pass to head over to Reading. So I had to stick local, but I did do some stuff. Uh, I closed the pool. Now, this confuses me. Is that like a snow tires thing? Because yes. I'm, I'm staring at my pool. And uh, actually, I spent yesterday running the skimmer over it and cleaning up some leaves. Yeah. This was uh, – global warming doesn't exist, but it was 91 degrees in the middle of September, <laughs> and I was closing the pool going, it's still too hot. Why am I closing the pool? Oh, because if I don't close it this weekend, I won't get it closed till like, November. And that's so. fair. Now, um, this is really isn't for you, but uh, to the lovely and talented Jennifer, who we already know doesn't listen, if you get sick of the nonsense up there in New Jersey uh, with the weather, a – Tri- ticket on Southwest is painfully cheap. Hop on that plane, come down here, and you and the patient and loving Vicky can commiserate in our hot tub about what miserable jerks me and Jeff are. It's definitely possible. Um, I, I I think that the uh, we we discussed Jersey Week and SEMA coming mm. out to visit, mm. but it does not look like we're going to get our SEMA tickets. So, but 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 yeah. Joan, if you're listening. We Joan, if you're listening, to... we're still take them. We'll still take them, absolutely. Well, but again, I... even without even without SEMA tickets, yeah, Jen can just hop on a plane. She's awesome. Well, let me talk about some of the other stuff to show uh, show uh, whatever her name is from SEMA how much we do. <laughs> uh, I went to the metal place. I picked up a bunch of roll cage tubing. I picked up a bunch of sheet aluminum. I had the the wonderful moment of you know trying to do the calculation in my head, you know. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a great metal place out here in Jersey, and there was a stack, probably a foot and a half tall, of really nice, thicker than I wanted aluminum sheet metal that Ooh. that had that had written on it clearance. Oh, and then it said, and then it had the dimensions on it in another handwriting, and said cut immediately for Fred to pick up. And clearly, Fred had not picked up his metal, and they were selling it out from under him. So they were, it was nice, but it was like a little heavier. So I decided, since we are only encasing uh, the fuel cell away from us, that we probably didn't need that heavy of, a, of an aluminum sheet. So I got regular stuff. But it was mm. like, mm, what is this per pound? What is that way? What is, you know, we had, I, I did metal math. It was great. 
Um, <laughs> metal math sounds like something that uh, that Matt would do in his thong, but we're not going to go there. So Sunday, I took Josh to an Eagle Scout project. So that's why I wasn't able to get in Chrissy and Chrissy's in time for the work weekend. And I tried to convince my wife, but she is not going to put the 11 foot pieces of roll cage tubing on the top of her Subaru Forester and take it to Chris and Chrissy's. So I will just have to go this weekend. See, and somewhere. I feel like if she ever actually did it and saw how many people got out of her way, you may have to permanently mount a, a jousting style chunk of metal on the roof of the Subaru. <laughs> well, she doesn't have roof racks. Oh yeah. Then never mind. So, sorry. I like, thought, I, I thought I had the, the, the ski oh, racks up there. She has, she has parallel roof racks. She doesn't have whatever we call that longitudinal racks. I don't know. Like she's only going down the side of the car. She doesn't have the crossbars. The, the, the crossbars have to be available on Craigslist or some such. Nonsense. I'm sure. I just, I, I'm not going to buy them. I have bars. <laughs> from Mazda 5. Why would I ever? Yeah. yeah fair know? enough. Yeah. All yeah. right. Good. So anyway. uh, we should, we should move on to a news and notes type thing. We have been talking about this for weeks I'd like to point out to Joan from SEMA that this is almost an exclusive at this point. <laughs> Every single bo- person in the re- in the world has talked about this. The Porsche Taycan and the Model S throw Taycan! Dash. Taycan! Uh, mm-hmm. At the Nuremberg ring, round one is over. Ding, ding, everybody's, ding. Winner is? And, and everybody's tweeted, and there are zero official records that have been set. Uh, so why? Both cars were not production models. This is kind of a problem. To set an official record, you need to be in a production model. It seems the Tesla was a stripped-down model with a Lexan wing, bigger brakes, wheels, tires, and potentially a third electric motor. Interesting. And an elect- and a software package. The, that will the not infamous be ludicrous. Yeah, the ludicrous no, no, mode. Plaid. Or, plaid, plaid. Yes, plaid. thank you. That will not be available until the next model. Mm. So that doesn't count. Uh, although that was 20 seconds quicker than the Porsche, the Porsche was a pre-production model that also did not qualify as an official record, but it's unknown how close it was to an actual production model because nobody could get close enough to it to see if it had what looked like a production interior. And you know, they haven't really shared the, uh, you know, the stats on it yet. So right. Know those are the wheels and the tires that will come with it. And, and, and I get a lot of this is nonsensical social media posturing. I still like the idea that they're fighting. I like that Tesla and Porsche are throwing down because Porsche is not going to take this, even the unofficial 20 seconds faster. They're, they're going to come back with something closer to a production in the first brief on there. And what I would love is that this fight generates enough interest that a third or even a fourth manufacturer starts bringing one of theirs. Well, I mean, who else would have something that could compete? Fisker, maybe? Fisker Karma? Well, well, the, the do they even make the Fisker Karma anymore after they, they lost all those and then started the flood recoveries were all equipped with LSs? Uh, whew, good. I mean, but someone has a Fisker Karma out there that could attempt to steal the record. Maybe ooh. it's not Fisker who does it. That's cool. That's like a yeah. private owner. That that's yeah. really good. You know, uh, or the uh, the all electric DeLorean that they have in Texas. That is owned by what is left of the DeLorean Motor Company that the guy bought all the rights to. Oh, really? I didn't even know that existed. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, I have a feeling that the Porsche was def- my In my opinion, this is one man's stupid opinion. By the way, I know nothing. <laughs> uh, Twenty seconds on the ring. In a much closer to production Taycan, I can't. that they have a way better shot at getting the record than Tesla right now. Plus, they're local; they can get, they can yeah. kind of go there when they want. Yeah, but I'm saying you take the interior out of a Tesla, and you're saving way more weight than 20 seconds, as as demonstrated by uh, our man who was reporting on Drag Week, because there was yes. a Tesla just crushing everyone with all the guts taken out of it. And there's numerous YouTube videos of guys doing the same thing, guys buying Tesla S's and gutting them and just crushing, heartbreaking everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to do your story and then I'll go back to mine? Yes. So this is great. Uh, Jesse Combs, her record is going to be submitted to the Guinness Book of World's Record, and that's according to an Autoblog article that we've linked in our show notes. 
and, and one of the, the the problems is she did get the record, but you had to do it both ways. They had a mechanical, and they couldn't come back the other way. This is one of the problems with the original Thrust SST when it broke the the sound barriers. They couldn't get it turned in time. And between that and um, oh, for Pete's sakes, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, Craig, uh, the 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 retired fireman who did it in the spirit oh, of America. Uh, Breedlove. Craig Breedlove. They were having that back and forth battle. But it looks like they've got a, a version of this that they're going to go in there. Even if it's only temporary, it's, it's genuinely impressive. And this was something she was very passionate about in her career. And what I like best about it is it's not that, you know, she's she was the fastest woman alive, but she's not going in the, the Guinness Book of Records because she was the fastest woman. She's going in because she was just fast, period. Yeah. She has the the record was not based on was based on a class is that the truth yes but not not based on gender right it just i mean and it, it just by nature of pursuing a record she got yeah. the mantle of fastest woman which I, awesome but i love that she wasn't shooting for that she just wanted to be fast yeah yeah got it cool uh in other news the government is coming to take your radios sort of uh and, and lemons racers Listen up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there was this story on Hack a Day, which was shared amongst uh, many of the different racing forums, that the government has shut down or has, has the SEC has made it illegal to sell the Lemon's favorite radio, the Bofang, uh, I'm trying to remember what it is, the 5R Plus. Basically, there's a whole series of radios that do not comply with the FCC rules and make it very easy to uh, transmit on frequencies that you're not allowed to transmit on. So the Bofang happens to be the most popular because you can buy it for like, 20 bucks and this is how every lemons team progresses yeah they first they first start out they build the car they have fun maybe they have some sort of radio shack thing that they've rigged yeah. up or you know they've got their their buddies walkie talkies those little yellow bounce proof walkie talkies those are terrible yeah and then they get online and they find the, the bio fangs and they work up some little you know freak show science experiment that gets this stuff to work on their helmet, then everyone gets sick of it and you go and buy Kenwood's or uh, what's the, what, you know, one of the other actual Ken, Kenwood is the one that a lot of people are the, the, the big money people are buying. Exactly. Or yeah. the people that just got tired of garbage. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite ones is Todd Carver, the listener of the show, the rock steady racing guy. He actually went and bought a base station and he mounted that in the car rather than the headset. So he never runs out of electricity. It's yeah, connected yeah. to the radio. And it rode Atlanta in the pits, of the infield pits, with a mile of dirt between us and the car. He always got through. Yeah, well, we've used the U5R, UV-5 pluses, mm -hmm. which is one of the bow fangs that are being uh, pulled off the shelves. We've used those for years, and they're... I, I wouldn't say rock solid, but they're 85, 95 percent. Yes. Uh, most of the times when we have a problem, it's a headset problem, not interacting well with the radio or our push to talk button. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's the, the, the actual not the state the of the radio itself. works. But, yeah. but it is interesting because there's, a, I mean, how many bio fangs do we see walk around uh, a champ car Every, or a lemons or even an Every, AER pit? Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Everybody. It's just the go-to radio. So anyway, yeah, who knows what's going to happen with that. Uh, according to the article in Hackaday, the day we are recording, which is Thursday the 25th. Today's is, Wednesday, by the way. Or today's Wednesday. I'm sorry, Wednesday the 25th of September. Uh, and I think tomorrow is the last day they will be available, uh, Thursday the 26th. But so if you if you've got them, sell them, sell them on eBay is illegal. I, yeah, I've got I, I banned would, radios, brah. Yeah, I, I was going to say, think about, uh, you know, because the government banning things makes sure it doesn't get sold on the Internet. I, I don't know. Absolutely. It, it has say. totally worked with AR-15s. Yeah. Well, instead of going and buying them on Amazon, you're going to have to go to uh, a third-party sites such as eBay or a third-party seller through Amazon or, you know. 
Who knows? Yeah, well, or the flip side, when everyone got the uh, subscription-based uh, transponders. So everyone that has the old school, I just own my transponder, the price of those doubled. Well, I'm going to go buy a couple tonight. I'm just saying. <laughs> Race reporting time. We only got one, right? Two. So we have two races. One two races. series. Two races. Two series. Okay, yeah. Two races, one cup. Right, anyway. So first one, uh, the results are a little vaporous on this, but I'm going to go through it. So the Nebraska Enduros at Hastings in the Hastings, Nebraska, we have reported another race out there. It Hastings, Nebraska is in the middle of Nebraska, which by definition is in fact the middle of nowhere. When I lived out there, the rumor was it was this old farmer who had a bunch of land and he really liked motorcycle racing. So he paved a racetrack. It's Seems nice. reasonable. Exactly. It's nice though, because uh, they basically said, you know, the guy really liked racing. So, you got away with a lot because he enjoyed it. So Champ Car was out there. Now on Saturday, they had a seven hour. The MyLapse official results only list eight cars. Oh, really? Which we knew it was a limited race when we looked at the entrance on this one, but it was it was it was in it was in the twenty something. So I don't know if that is a hiccup with the reporting procedures or they only had eight cars. I Wow. I genuinely hope it's a hiccup with the reporting because we had Bill Strong on the show, and while we don't do much champ car racing, we like it. it yeah, anything that I puts want people it to survive exactly anything that puts people on the track. Honestly, especially in some place like Nebraska, because I lived there. When I lived there, there was no the internet was still in its infancy, and it was a miserable place to be a gearhead. It's gotten much much better. So the first, second, and third went to the Ergo Lab ninety three Mazda. Second place was the My Elan Plus 2 90 Mazda. And number three was the tired 1991 boring BMW 325. Sunday, they only reported six. My Elan took first. Two beaners in a bucket. We've talked about that team before. We like that team. Two beaners in a bucket managed to take second. And third was Team Kerchiro and their 86 Toyota tired ended up fourth got it now that's a good race truly great race was at sebring the sebring 14 hour we're gonna we're gonna spend a little bit of time on this one go ahead i don't know the results I'll <laughs> just play along. fair enough so first overall went to ksr flat out uh, and second was 9-4 Motorsports. We've talked about them before. They're a very strong competitor on the East Coast and Champ Car, and also a very strong competitors, Team Infinity and their 94 Infinity on there. But the big news, when you go by class, Class B fell victorious to, wait for it, yes, Team Fat Crack Racing, the team that we sponsored. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very nice. In their Honda Accord, in their decidedly Radwood era, they uh, they painted this thing up very Miami Vice, very Radwood style. And for this race, they added pink headlight surrounds because it was a 14-hour race. But most importantly, on the hood, they were sporting an Everyone Racers podcast decal right over uh, the uh, Ric Flair Woo Tang clan that they also had put on there. But I'm going to credit our sticker with going on there. Genuinely, they had a little bit – they. Um, Kelly Crossan, one of our the listeners of the show, he got tangled up in a little bit of an accident, so they had to beat the passenger side rear fender back into shape, get the car back out there. They lost their transponder. It fell off the car. Dustin, the team principal, went and successfully lobbied for, hey, could we just get a couple of those left back, please? And they put him back in there, and that, that got him in first place. I've run with this team at Daytona. I've run with this team at Sebring. It's a great bunch of guys. They are second-generation racers that all grew up together because their dads all used to go to Sebring. And oh. Sebring is Sebring itself, the big actual IMSA race at Sebring, is a, it's a great, big, huge, drunken festival that everyone should go see once in their life. And their dads all got to be really, really tight. And so then the kids all grew up together. And, of course, they're all racers. It, they're a great bunch of guys. They are painfully polite. They still walk around referring to every other dad by mr they call him mr b or mr c whoever it, it is just second generation gear has their it's a great team i love going down there i love hanging out with those guys i love talking to dustin and kelly and 
all those guys on uh, the various social medias. They're just a fantastic team. And to see them finally win, and you can follow them on Instagram or on Facebook at Fat Crack Racing. The team is named after one of their uncles. He was just a heavier guy, and his pants never fit. They just all called him Uncle Fat Crack. Lovingly called him <laughs> Uncle Fat Crack, and he and he passed away when they started their race team. They called it Fat Crack Racing in his honor. It's 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 a whole great thing. The other car that was fantastic down there was our very own Doctor Florida Man Dotty because I Florida saw Man. This on the <laughs> exactly, Florida Man Dotty was running with who else? Florida Man Racing in a 904 Mustang. Uh, he posted on Twitter that he was busy composing a love letter to everyone racers. It's on our email. I have that letter here. And a reading from the book of Florida Man. Ever rode a paint mixer on an airplane that was going through extreme stewardess freaking out levels of turbulence? I'm also pretty sure that's because of how tight the sub belt was. Kids are thoroughly out of the equation now, but that's probably for the best. I digress. Florida Man Racing brought home the 42nd place finish overall, which just goes to show the answer to everything in the universe is Florida Man Donnie. I don't disagree with that statement. Sure. <laughs> and we also finished sixth in the exception class, which in Champ Car is a competitive class. These are the guys that are kind of outside the rules. The battery in the Mustang was either not charging or had a dead cell. Every hour when we fueled it, we had to push and start it. That was the extent of our failures for the weekend. We wound up having only three drivers for the 14-hour race, and I was lucky enough to get the Sunset stint. Donnie, I know exactly what you're talking about. Sunset at Sebring is a magical time. When you're flying down the Ullman Strait, headed into turn 17, watching the sun dip below the fence, it's really hard not to get caught up in the moment of all the greats that came before you including Steve McQueen, I'd like to say, and did exactly this, just in way better machines. It was strangely pseudo-romantic. I was lucky enough to get the closing shift from 10 o'clock to 11, giving me 5.5 hours of drive time during the race. Sebring in the dark is a wonderful creature. It is, because there's not the light that you think would be out there. It's all flat. Now, what would we be if I didn't include some drunken math? For those who don't know, Dr. Florida Mandani is getting his PhD in applied mathematics. That's one of a myriad of things that makes him fascinating to talk to. So this is where he gets nerdy. I took in 665.6 ounces of fluid, water and Powerade during the race. I had a decent breakfast, eggs and meats, ate fruit, meat and cheese throughout the day. And with the exception of a hot dog bun, <clears throat> hot dog with a bun before my last stint. It was only 93 degrees, that's a Florida 93 degrees, so I was kind of cold in the car, but I did lose 11 pounds between waking up this morning Holy and cow. showering after the race, so I'm just about ready for bikini season. All in all, it was a bad uh, blast. Shout out to Dustin, even though I couldn't find him, because he went over there and he was looking for the uh, Fat Crack Racing, and I got a, a text, and he also put it on his Instagram of, huh. Not being able to find anyone in the paddock reminds me of that time in Pittsburgh when I did bath salts and I ate everyone's face. I smiled every time that E1R sticker passed us on the track. Keep up the good work. Love you guys. See you in Atlanta. Bring your party hats. Thank you, That's Donnie. Awesome. <laughs> hey, there was one other uh, interesting event. Uh, yes. Did you see anything about the grocery getter race? At Bearfield Motorsports Park in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Is that the one the the they took the neon the team? They took the, the neon, yes. Yeah, no, so, and I read all about that on the Instagram. It looks awesome, and congratulations. It was a twenty four hour race on a three eighths mile paved oval. It looks like it had a tremendously janky, just run what you brung, pop the glass out of your street car and go to it kind of rule <laughs> set. But uh, Albert Wenzel, Chris Reynolds, uh, uh, Owen O'Malley, Edward, I don't know how to say his last name. They look like they uh, took home some trophies. That Yeah, I, I saw that it was just, it, it was one of those, uh, the, it was a neon coupe. Which yeah, in, in and of itself is green, the best color ever. But that, that was, it's a rare car. That's what yeah. I was going with. That, that is, yeah, so great. Great honor for taking that car and bringing it out to do what it was designed to do. And, and a 24-hour enduro at a circle track sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Oh, so they had 1,500 laps. 
Holy the winner crap. had the winner had thirty three hundred. Yikes! The where were they? The mid pack or I, I saw. 40s. I, I, I don't know. They, they, I want to say I saw forty something. Yeah. It, oh, you know what? I thought they were holding trophies. They're holding beers in the picture. Never mind. Oh, it's a dirt track. Of course, they're holding beers in the picture. <laughs> no, yeah. it's paved. Paved three. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but it's a. I'm sorry. Circle track. Circle track, of course. So anyway, any other race results before we move on? Uh, I we we know we got some upcoming stuff. Uh, Jeff's been working. I've been moving. Chris and Chrissy have been traveling and working. We just haven't had time. So if we're not handicapping your race coming up this weekend, we apologize. Don't worry. We'll get to the results next week. We have a very special guest next week. So we're looking forward to that show. Awesome. Uh, listener feedback, feedback. time. Uh, so we definitely started an internet discussion. A think tank has, has, has convalesced on our Facebook pages. Really smart All people too. Really smart people, smarter people than us, including engineers and guys who pull wrenches for a living and all kinds Seriously. of stuff like that. So uh, the discussion with Jay, yes, last week about how someone can win the all electric lemons race spurred some tremendously interesting discussion. Uh, Chris Egan started the conversation on Facebook. He said the battery swap problem for a potential lemons win winner is exactly the type of problem he likes solving. Uh, if there's a team honestly looking to attempt a thing, he wants to help seriously. He said, I would like to offer engineering to a team that wants it. I don't have money or a, a, to chase the electric race car thing myself. I do have access to various CNC machines to make fancy brackets and other bits, though. Trust me, he is a maker. He is an engineer. He also said, I have a bunch of work with blind mate connectors and alignments for his real job, along with designing things for harsh loads and vibrations, designing the system to slide packs in and out quickly and safely would be a lot of fun. So, whew, do you, what else I, did you read you in that? I did, but here's having race with against and with Chris several times. Uh, if you understood everything he just talked about, he's not blowing smoke. He's a he's yeah. a he's a very humble. I mean, he's he's great to hang out with, but he's he's kind of humble about how smart he is. Yeah, there there is a six paragraph discussion here where he is quoting uh, the electric. Uh, the 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 weight and the size of different packs, uh, 1,200 pounds for an 85 kilowatt Tesla pack, which is a lot. How roughly the second, the uh, the 70, uh, something per pound Nissan Leaf packs are 24 thousand watts and 684. He's done a lot more research in this already than I think most of the other teams out there. He's talking about the form factor. He's talking about the cooling. And, and, that, and, and that was Ooh. interesting when they started talking about the cooling because those of us who are not that deep of electric or alternative fuel enthusiasts, we don't think about that. But a lot of these races are run in the summer and it is demanding and hard and electricity well, is I mean, a concern. It could be in it could be in Alaska. The, the, <laughs> the amount of angry pixies that are coming in and out of those cells to power that car is going to generate a lot of heat. And uh, Aaron of of Wartburger Flame, uh, he also had some interesting discussion about like, so you know what are the rules and what are the fueling rules because you're not going to be able to lift those packs, and you know, how to slide them in and out on a drawer and, you know, will Jay adjust the rules so you can have more people over the wall? What are the current rules? It says for fueling. So does this all count for fueling? You know, interesting discussion. Um, I, I almost think like we should do a whole show on it. Maybe bring in Chris Egan and Aaron and maybe somebody else out there that's working on it. Well, and I, being that Jay is, is, genuinely interested in promoting this type of thing. I think Jay would be a, a great addition just to talk about electric stuff. Uh, and what was the thing I didn't realize that I kind of knew one of the, the problems is the fire extinguishers on the side of pit row are designed for fuel and regular race cars and electric fires require a completely different chemical. Yeah. Good question. Do they need a halon, right? Halon would be the electric 
safe it, alternative, right? And Halon? It, it, yeah, and that, that? It, it is. It is Halon. It's what version? Because uh, Halon 1181 was the stuff that we used to use on the plane and in some of the old data centers that I worked in. But by and large, you're not allowed to make it anymore. You're allowed to have it, but you can't make it anymore because it's terrible for the environment. It's also highly corrosive when exposed to water. Hmm. <laughs> Which the last thing you want to put on that kind of fire is anything that's aqueous. Wow. Chris Egan, start that conversation now. What kind of fire bottle do you need? So if you're interested in electric cars, head on over to our Facebook page. Join that conversation because it was interesting. Oh. Um, a little, it, it's going to come across as a little bit disingenuous, but whenever we talk about this person, I assure you it's always genuine. Even though her son-in-law and her daughter aren't here, there is never a time when we don't think of how great Chrissy's mom is. So, hi, Chrissy's mom. Well, and, and I'm, I'm going to cause another challenge here. Ooh. Chrissy's not on the show. Is she even going to listen? <laughs> we'll find out next <laughs> we'll week. We'll find out. <laughs> Chrissy's mom, the next time I run into you, you tell me whether you actually heard this podcast or not. Because I'm sitting in my backyard overlooking my pool. It is a lovely sunset because I'm three hours away from Jeff, who's already at dark. And I'm thinking, you know what would make this perfect? cookies cookies absolutely so and also chrissy's mom if you uh and we know she has a name but it's more fun to refer to as chrissy's yeah. mom if you oh. also get tired of pennsylvania winters the house is always open as long as you bring cookies no Big you don't you don't have to break cookies you're totally fine topic time. <laughs> I can't topic time. anyway i'm trying to lose some weight uh whew, I, I don't even know how to begin this so uh if you're listening to our podcast, you probably are some sort of subscriber to many of the internet forums on racing. They all kerfuffle. The internet kerfuffle is happening. The post race CSI that happens anytime something fails. The, the tires had not been properly heat cycled. Yeah. What had happened right there is clearly he did not account for the temperature difference between the start of the race and the end of the race. So I'll describe it because I'm sure there are people out there like Chrissy's family that haven't actually seen this video. Uh, there is a video and a lot of discussion about it. It was originally posted in the Fast Mustangs forum. Uh, some poor guy took the guardrail head on. And to say that his harnesses failed in a spectacular way would be not over dramatization. Uh, his harness has failed. He went right into the steering wheel. The steering wheel bent. He took it right in the chest. It was totally terrible. Um, I we, we put a link in our show notes, so if you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. Mental, what's your reaction? I'm sure you've seen it. So the, the steering wheel into the chest, and this is really genuinely frightening. Uh, I'm going to get a little too personal here. My uncle, my mom's brother died when I was 12 years old because he got into a car accident and it was you just didn't wear seatbelts back then and that's exactly what killed him was the steering wheel went into his chest bruised his heart they got him out of the vehicle and later that night he died of a heart attack because his heart which is a big muscle was bruised it couldn't do its job so a steering wheel going into your chest should scare you more than you think it should. It's not just about the old 50s cars where the steering column would impale you. But anything hitting your chest that hard, and bear in mind, a, a typical full frontal crash is, let's conservatively say, 4 Gs, which means somebody like me, you weigh 800 pounds. And so imagine something hitting you in the chest with 800 pounds. How are you going to survive that? That's why we have four-point harnesses. So go anywhere. Five type, or six-point, really. Really. With so sub belts. go anywhere and Google safety belt failure. And you'll see where this hook, this cheap Chinese hook, just friggin' broke. Yeah, um, it's it, it seems to be a sab belt. Is, am I saying that right? Sub belt, sab belt? S -A -B -E -L -T. I, 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 I think it was a knockoff. I don't think it was a real one. Well, that, that's what I'm getting to. Uh, yeah. Have you seen the, I just put it in the show notes, the V-Sport Sabelt Race Harness Real versus Fake Link. This was, Ah, that's an excellent link. Good. This, I'm this glad was, you're putting that in there. Yeah, yeah, this was put on the internet, and 
I'm I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I would not have known the difference. Except, what's the price on that one? Well, yeah, that's really what it is. I mean, we don't really know what they paid. We don't know where they got it. That hasn't been part of the discussion. I, I shouldn't say, let, let, let me do a caveat. Mental and I know nothing. We do not know this person. <laughs> we have not seen the items. We only know what is being discussed on the internet. And many people are saying, and that's what we have to say because we don't know if it's true or not, that this was purchased on eBay uh, from some sort of third party seller, Ali, whatever market, mm -hmm. um, for an extremely cheap price, like under $100. Yes. And. Um, so V Sport I, I, is a company, I assume some sort of reputable company, uh, looking at their website. Yeah. So they, they posted up a, I think it's about a 12 picture um, comparison. And they're basically saying, look, we bought from a third party site because we wanted to see what people were selling. And let's see what they say. They purchased from eBay for a hundred and twenty dollars when they're saying that their current price is three hundred and fifty. So a little over a hundred dollars. They showed they did a failure test. They showed the box. They showed the buckle. They showed the tag. They showed the clip ins. They showed all of it. And I'm telling you, like, they're saying, you know, look, the font is different. Mm -hmm. I can barely tell the difference between the font. And this is just like anything else. If you're buying something from someone you don't know or from a mass reseller, and it's the infamous, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. If you go to reputable sites like Safe Racer, which incidentally is a marvelous company. I've been Hashtag to their Hashtag they should totally sponsor us. They should. I've been to their showroom in Joplin, Missouri. They're a fantastic company group of folks discovery parts which is genuinely where i get most of my stuff they're located they have a brick and mortar store at atlanta motors motorsports park veteran owned business fantastic folks yeah, i go pegasus. in there and buy pegasus also in oklahoma city i've walked into their showroom uh winding road in texas where if you join nasa you get a discount through winding road racing and i am certain we are missing several businesses that we've we've bought things from yeah, but if you go parts whole, whole racer wholesale. parts wholesale completely forgot about them um there's a ton of local places barrents is a place in new york what's the one in new that what's the one in new track. jersey uh um oh on, uh, at new jersey motorsports uh, yeah 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 uh, uh oh my gosh uh, anyway. bob zeka is the owner uh right uh, race impressions thank you so go to three or four of those sites You'll you'll find basically those parts are usually within several dollars each other. It comes down to what your level of customer support satisfaction or how soon you need it, who's got it in stock kind of a deal is. But they're all selling their reputations because they're selling directly to racers at a racetrack are based on the quality of equipment they sell. And if you're looking at something that's suddenly half price and it doesn't say I bought these, they don't fit my car, but it's some sort of mass eBay reseller you're probably taking a huge chance and you're not just endangering yourself. You're endangering everybody else on the track. Good friend of mine, Tom, when he first got there, he didn't want to spend the $300 on a set of rotors for his, uh, his uh, Dodge stealth RT. So he bought a set of cheap Chinese brake rotors, which failed on the Nuremberg ring and effectively totaled his car. Yeah, we, uh, and, and, and we're going to get to this discussion in a minute, what you should and shouldn't be spending all your money on. Um, I will say that the two probably most important things in this V Sport comparison is uh, the fake harnesses seem to have a label with an FIA number, but no FIA like hologram. So mm. I, they're kind of saying that the hologram is definitely the way that you can tell that it's fake or not, because everything else is like, uh, you know, like and and. We should say the end clips seem to be what broke in this. Yes, the, they they the they ends. they failed catastrophically. Yeah, the, the the metal itself ripped like the seat of 
tight pants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you who have never seen clip-ins, I, I guess with our people out here that only do other style, there's a little spring-loaded hook, you know, that that is that is what you put into an eye bolt into the metal, you know, through the metal of your car, and they look identical, but one of them doesn't have a place to put a safety wire, and one of them doesn't have, like, a stamped serial number on it. But mm. other than that, I wouldn't have really known the difference. And I wouldn't have known to look for a stamped serial number in, you know, the identity stamps. I, I wouldn't have known to look for that until I saw this article. So, like, I, I, I would love to say this jerk off bought cheap stuff and we would never do that. I'm telling you, I could have been fooled by this. The and, stuff that came in this box. And this is the nature of counterfeiters. Across the board, when I was in the Middle East, the uh, the we went into a reputable watch shop that sold Rolexes, and the guy went through every detail that Rolex has added to their watches to prevent counterfeit. We proceeded to step outside of that shop, walk two doors down to a shop that proudly sold knockoffs, and the guy went through every point that the genuine Rolex guy had gone through and showed how his counterfeit matched exactly that. It had yeah. the same weight. It had the same hologram. It had the same etching in the glass, all of that. So the only genuine clue that we would have, or most people would have is the huge price difference. If yeah, it's, totally. if, if it's markedly cheaper and you've never heard of these people, there's your first clue. That should bother you. That should yeah. that should give you pause. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's let's talk about a few other things in this. Um, the internet kerfuffle was absolutely hilarious. Uh, the, <laughs> the video is not the it's you the know, video's the, not the, funny. The, the discussion is, funny. is hilarious. The discussion is funny. Um, I think my favorite part is when somebody clearly from the Faster Mustangs site. Uh, posted up that it was clearly the cheap Japanese metal in the car that caused the problem. <laughs> and then John Pagel, head of safety, Paul Lemons. Also, you know, that that... The, the man whose brain could light a match yeah. just by staring at it. Yeah. Like he suggested that that may have been a racist comment. And <laughs> the guy from, I assume the Mustang forum said, you should learn something about metal and building race cars before you comment. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Like, hashtag Google me, mother. Trucker. I don't know what um, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and very few people, in 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 our chosen race series, if not muttered under the breath, rr, 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 John Pagel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah. there's there's Pagel no arguing. Failed me for blah blah blah. Yeah, exactly. Know. But there's no arguing that we we have maintained a really good safety record in no small part due to his efforts because the cars have gotten way faster. So yeah, he might he might might know a thing or two. Yeah, so that anyway. is that is hilarious. Let, let's shift gears and get to the actual part where we can instruct some people. Let's sure. talk about where you can and can't save money when you're buying a race car or building safety, building a race car or buying safety equipment. I don't know. Do you got any tips for the people out there? So I'm the dumbest guy on this podcast. I'm the dumbest guy on the race team, which keeps getting more and more demoralizing. Hey, hey the... you're second place tonight, buddy. <laughs> Because because our race team keeps getting bigger and bigger and it's full of really, really <laughs> smart people. So I'm going to always try and dumb it down as much as humanly possible. So I'm going to throw this out there. And if you've got a different experience, please correct me on our social media. But I'm going to say places you can afford to save money. If it is something that helps you go faster, perhaps that's where you should probably save a few dollars. <laughs> if it's something that is going to slow you down or keep you on uh, keep you not on fire. The, the cops keep... are coming for you, man. Yeah, I know, right? Keep you not on fire. Oh, Don't I... worry, man. Uh, it's a I'm... safe neighborhood, I promise. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, if it's going to keep you from burning up, keep you not on, uh, keep you from exploding, or it's something that slows you down, that's where you don't save money. That's where you spend the cash. You know, buy the cheapo 
cold air intake, absolutely go down to AutoZone and buy the thing that's on clearance and then use a bunch of duct tape to make it fit. Brake rotors, <laughs> maybe go to Rock Auto and spend the spend the money on the big brake rotors, which for racing, for racing, you don't need drilled rotors. Yeah. Well, and we buy cheap rotors. We don't really, but we consider them re- replaceable. We, so you, you change them constantly. You we, don't live with them forever. Right. We buy we buy bargain price rotors. True. Not, not the dirt cheapest. Exactly. And, you know, and they are usually just good old fashioned, reputable brand metal. No slots. No cross drilled. No nothing. Rotors. Because nope. yeah, they're going to last two races. You know. Wow. Depends on the car. <laughs> Two seasons. <laughs> SD43s. No, but here's but, what but they say. But they are, I also, I also know they're measured on a regular basis, yeah, yeah. and they are examined buy, every race. Buy the cheap rotor, buy the best brake pad. Ooh, this is see, how there, you there you go. There you go. That that makes sense. There are places where you can save. Do you have a carbon fiber helmet? No. Mental? And, no. And, and, and I, I seriously evaluated this, and this is when I bought my last helmet from Discovery Parts. Hashtag they should sponsor us for the price, uh, the price difference in the carbon fiber. There was no and they, they, they write this down. There is no safety difference between my fiberglass, and my carbon fiber. It was a weight difference and helmet weight does not bother me because everything I drive runs a halo seat. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is totally where you can save some money. How about this race suit? Do you have a five layer suit that you don't have to wear underwear under? I, I do, and I still wear underwear under it. And I just, and I, you know, it, but it's like, it's because it, I'm just getting old, and I don't want to burn up. Yeah. And so I just, I just, I have, I have two sets of fireproof underwear, and I sweat through them, and then I hang them up, and I wear the, I wear the next set the next day. Well, and this could save some money because you could get a used race suit from Race Image. We've talked about them a hundred times. Proven, a fantastic inspected, suit. Yeah, proven, that inspected, is- real. Yeah, that is way cheaper than buying a new suit off the rack. Mm-hmm. Or buy a three-layer suit and use underwear, a cheaper way to go. And you and I are still driving in the quilts. We're the I think we're the last people on three puddle no, mafia. No, not me. I went to a good one. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. So I'm the <laughs> I'm the last guy driving in a quilt. And I remember because I got out of the Garage Hero Trainings BMW at Thompson. And everyone was like, wow, that's really impressive because it was drying overnight. Felt ring on my back from basically where I, but yeah. I, you know what? I sweat through it. Not going to burn up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this is what I'm saying. You can buy the heavier suit that that counts as dry as driver comfort. Yes. Mm-hmm. The $700 suit will be more comfortable, but comfort should be the last thing that you're worried about. Life and I, I, I didn't part. save money. I didn't save money on burn proofedness i saved money on comfort yeah well and there's plenty of ways to do this your radios buy the cheap ass bow fangs oh, yeah. don't use a radio uh you can build your own cool setup cool shirt setup uh every single switch panel like if you're paying somebody to fabricate something that's where you can save money you can save money through sweat effort sweat equity by building stuff yourself yes and you're, by and large, particularly when it comes to sweat equity, you're not carving new territory. This sport has been around for rolling up on 15 years. Somebody has done it before you. They've learned the lessons. And they will tell you almost explicitly, go to the junkyard, look for this part, this part, this part. One of the, uh, the great things is the seat adjusters. Go to the junkyard, yeah. find a Jeep Cherokee. It is a three pin on each side manual adjuster that goes through metal that seat is not moving and you can have an adjustable seat in your race car that is perfectly safe that is passed dot testing and is rock solid yeah absolutely uh it's a uh, jeep yj right mm-hmm. and I, I think so, it's a fairly standard across across their line yeah you and, can find them anywhere yeah uh they're they're like my particular favorite when it comes to switch panels, Volvo. Volvo, if you can get the old school rear wheel drive, those are rock solid switches. And they are blatantly obvious what they do. You could put new uh, covers on them. And they light up when you turn them on. You could build all that kind of crap yourself. Cool. 
Um, I also want to mention that here's some things that we don't skimp on. Uh, cage building. Nope. <laughs> find, you know, like, yeah, find a good metal shot near you. Ask around. Go to your local dirt track if you don't have endurance races around there. Or there are plenty. Uh, Jegs and Summit both sell a lot of prefab race cage kits. Yeah, yeah. and I was going to say, like, uh, Chris and I were having the conversation about 95 wall or 120 wall in the solstice. Mm -hmm. And the solstice is probably going to be under the magic number where we could use 0.95 instead of uh, 0.120 or, yeah, help me out. Yeah, well, yeah. 0.095. The the thicker stuff. Yeah, yeah. We could use the thinner stuff instead of the thicker stuff. But he said, just buy the 120 wall because it's what we use everywhere else and 80 pounds in the end of the race car isn't going to make a difference. Exactly. And 80 that's, pounds. That's, you can you can save that with a, a pack of dry ice and a hammer by getting all the sound insulation out of your car. And no car has ever won a race in amateur endurance racing by 80 pounds. No. There's, there's no reason that you should try and skimp or save. Now, back in the day, they used to actually check wall thickness. Um, I haven't seen anyone check wall thickness at a lemons race in a very long time. It is still in the rules that you're supposed rule, to absolutely. have a, a drill. You're supposed to drill a hole for the depth. But I, I think, a, you know, cage is one of those things where if your car passed the first time, it's not like you've got the cage and put in a new cage to save. Yeah, 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 you know. But, I mean, we bring new race cars all the time, and I don't think people have drilled one of our cages maybe since the boat. I'm not really sure. Because you have an established reputation. I Uh, I guess. I remember when the first time I did it after racing with you guys at Summit Point in the Warp Burger, we built a Miata, and I ordered a prefabbed cage kit from a spec Miata company, and it... It was actually great because everything was pretty much pre-bent and all we had to do was maybe grind a couple of uh, the, the mouth openings to tune it the way we liked it. And, uh, it, yeah, it actually came with a hole drilled and they checked it. Yeah. Because we were a brand new team and it was a uh, – the, the, the series was still – I don't want to say infancy but adolescence. And there, there was still some sketchy stuff showing up. That was the same weekend the uh, the one team that showed up that uh, they they only brought one driving suit. Oh, oh! In, in that, Texas, that, I'm not so sure that's a good way to save money. No. You can share gear. We should mention that you can share gear in lemons. Uh, but Pons, putting Pons on is a good a, thing to share. Ooh, putting on someone else's sweaty suit <laughs> or sharing a helmet is really low on my list. We, we, and I've talked about it on this show before, but you could see it as the guys were sliding their arms into the suit. Their facial expression was, oh, this was a bad idea. <laughs> oh. But they weren't going to burn up. Yep, absolutely. Sorry, I'm adding some notes down the bottom there. So, well, well, and then, any other... Any other so, tips on saving money or where you shouldn't save money? Maybe we should enter that part of the country. We've had extended conversations about the fuel cells. Just, oh, yeah, absolutely. Just, just get the FIA approved, the ATL. If you're going the fuel cell route, if you're not or if you're it, looking to save money on a fuel cell, leave the stock system yes, in that's a place. Great, great discussion. It's, yeah, because it's not just the fuel cell that comes along with it. It's all the new plumbing and everything. And, for example, Steph Schrader's 944 has been parked twice because it's got fueling problems. And, you know, and it leaks gas. And in Lemons, you, you get two. Uh, most other race series... Yeah, been there. Yeah, exactly. Most other race series, they don't spell it out in their rules, but I'm going to tell you, having been there, they are every bit as intolerant of fuel leaks. Sorry, they will black flag you in a heartbeat. And that's not always just the race series. That's the track because gasoline destroys asphalt blatantly so it'll chew it all up and no racetrack wants to have to repave their pit lane so gas gas spillages are going to get you into a lot of trouble um so it it, it does it comes back to that um tires so we all like to run the as close to the tread wear pattern that you can possibly get tires and a lot of a lot of you know track day guys are like oh bro I totally want to go to this track day but like I can't afford the Pirelli uh, like super like low dog yeah. sport stuff e- so I'm Eagle not Eagle F one 
Yeah, bro. I have my so, Eagle F1. Yeah, so I'm not going. You can totally go down to Walmart, get and a Douglas good extra track. Exactly, and genuinely, it's going to make you a better driver because you're going to learn to feel the adhesion limits on your tires. Shock well, absorbers. I, no, no, go ahead, finish your. Are, yeah. There are people who are saying that Douglas extra tracks are not as bad as you could as you would imagine. No, the dollar saved is probably worth it because they're 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 they don't grip as much as your high end tires, but they're extremely predictable. They are very manageable, very controllable. It's a great way to learn shock absorbers. You don't need the super NASA 37 point adjustable shock absorbers. A good set of Monroe extra yep. tracks. Yeah. Gas, will... gas, gas plus. Monroe absolutely. Gas plus. Yes. Whatever you got. They will absolutely get you through a race and you buy them through rock auto and they, they fail. Send them back. Yeah. Yeah. Here. This is a great tip. Shock absorbers. Get the cheap ones. Yeah. Brake pads. Do not get the Wagner quiet stop. No. Or the, the Wagner organics. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's a bunch of little things that you can buy off of eBay and be sure that they are probably going to be 90% as good as anything else. Because all of the ricers are putting them on their cars these days and all the little performance, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hella tight, hella flush guys are all putting hood pins on their car. Mm -hmm. You can buy cheap, cheap, cheap aluminum hood pins everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the tow hooks. Everybody and their brother is running tow hooks. Go down to AutoZone, walk over to the <laughs> walk over to the quote unquote performance aisle. Yeah. <laughs> and grab buy a set of tow hooks. Tow. Yeah, you uh, don't, you don't need those ninety dollar billet aluminum mount ones. No, you just the old school screw in types. They're fine. Uh, kill switches. Do not buy cheap. No, that actually sidelined our spec pinata Miata because we bought a set uh, or I bought a cheap out of AutoZone kill switch for like twelve bucks, and it was not getting enough juice through the kill switch. To keep the car running. Uh, they also come in different amounts of poles. Yes. And if you need one that has enough poles to kill all, all of the accessories. Yep. Because your car will run off the alternator. Yep. Go to, so, that's that's a safe racer, winding road, racers, yeah, we got wholesale. Pelican. Yeah, Pel yeah, just, that's a, go go buy it. And it, the, the, the ones I like are the drag racer ones. What do the drag racer ones look like? The, 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 it's the same, you know. But if if it's if it's a, a a website that is marketed to drag racers and they highly oh, recommend oh, oh. it, this yeah, yeah, is yeah, a yeah. switch that is going to kill. It's going to probably work, yeah, absolutely. Yes, because they don't screw around. Uh, I've seen the really nice push to stop rather than the turn kill switches uh, for emergencies, because that's mm -hmm. why you need a kill switch to shut the whole to shut any electricity that might be powering things that are going to catch fire. Yeah. Here's a little safety tip that we do all the time that uh, not everyone, I think, does. Uh, our ignition key, because we most of the time have the key still in the car, is connected to our kill switch by a string. Mm, that's because if in a panic you pull the key out and take it with you, you will hit the kill switch. Mm hmm. Like and you just think naturally again. We talk about building natural. You know, have the key, the key turn be the same direction that the kill switch turn works, so that it feels natural. Well, in an emergency situation, you turn off a car and you just take the key with you. You will turn off the kill switch. That is that is an excellent point. Um, Plus, another, you don't lose the keys. <laughs> yeah. Another great area, if you're looking to save seconds per lap, if you feel that you're so competitive, it is coming down to, we've got to go two seconds faster a lap. Practice your pit stops. Yeah. Friday sure. night, practice your pit stops. Have, have a plan of who is doing what. Who is holding the extinguisher? Who is assisting the driver out of the car? Who is buckling the new driver in the car? Who is going to the passenger side to help pull down those straps? Go through all of that, and that is a zero-dollar race-winning technique right there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 
So awesome. Is there anything else we want to say on this safety topic? I think we have reached the bottom of the notes for the show. I'm sure Chris and Chrissy have things to say. Oh, Chris, uh, you got uh, anything to say? Exactly. Chris is yelling at his radio right now. Oh, my God, these idiots. Ah. I can't believe it. Or he's sitting on an airplane flying back from Colorado going, oh, God, it, I will never let them do a show again without me. <laughs> and I'm sure Chrissy has tons of safety tips. Uh, but we are going to move on unless there's anything else you can say to – just the, the tip. tip. Uh, it it has already been a safety related show, so but I am going to go to a non race safety item. Uh, I recently had a conversation with a student of mine, a college student of mine, who talked about having trouble staying awake while they work. Like, oh, whenever I study, I fall asleep and I'm, you know, I work in this office and my boss caught me falling asleep at work. And I, I started quizzing them about their driving habits mm -hmm. and I made them realize that they were also falling asleep while they drive. Mm. And... I, used, I used to work with a guy that had this problem and it was whenever he drank a soda, uh, his body would react badly to sugar. No, oh, th th well, that's not what this person is having. Uh, I started talking about their sleep habits, and I think they probably need to be evaluated by a sleep specialist. Probably. Um, I, I was evaluated by a sleep specialist, and I know that I have uh, obstructive sleep apnea, and I am under treatment, and I am doing all of these things. And I want to tell you, everybody out there, that this stuff is no joke, and this is a driving tip, a life tip, not a real racing tip, but if you have sleep problems, if you don't understand sleep and why it's important, I'm going to tell you the danger signs. Oh, and, so, and folks, if all you 20-somethings that are listening right now, and you're like, oh, I'm good, brah. Get two hours. I can go all day. Yeah, your time is coming. This, this, The woman I was talking to was 20 years old. <laughs> so maybe she's 21. I'm not sure. Uh, so she talked about falling asleep while she reads. She talked about falling asleep while she while she. Uh, watch TV. She mm. talked about the inability to, to like really study a textbook or to sit alone in a quiet place without dozing off. Hmm. Also, I said, Hey, do you ever drift out of the lane? Do you ever have trouble staying awake? Do you ever have trouble with this? Oh yeah. yeah but usually I just open the window. If you find yourself doing defensive things to stay sharp while you're driving on the highway, Eating, snacking, drinking extra coffee, making sure that you open a window or sing, you know, all these things that we talk about to do when you're maybe falling asleep while you drive. It's if, too late. If you do that all the time, you have sleep problems. All right. So if you do it once in a while when it's two in the morning and you've been driving for six hours, you're just tired. And you, you still shouldn't it, be driving. And you still shouldn't be driving. But if you do it every day on your commute, you have a sleep problem and you should be uh, checked out by a doctor. Hmm. Uh, the guy that I used to ride, or the, the guy I used to work with, John, and he would, uh, he would either drink a soda or a Gatorade. And as soon as the sugar hit his system for about 10 minutes, you couldn't keep this guy awake. And we used to ride motorcycles together. And one time we were out, it was kind of hot. He had a Gatorade. And we're riding along, and all of a sudden, he's drifted out of the lane on his motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Drifting he, out of your lane is like the number one thing. Yeah, if you're drifting, he was nodding off you're dozing. Yep. On a bike, and he'd gotten plenty of sleep. It was so he had to go talk to his doctor about that. So it, it, you know, it could be a sleep problem, and it could be also your diet. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Have we done everything? Did we make Chris and Chrissy proud? Probably not, but yeah, that's our <laughs> thing. This is really cool. So next week. Oh, wait, uh, let me hit the music. No, 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 no. We're not talking because it's a promo. The music starts just, when you wrap up the show. I just. Oh. <laughs> so next week, it will not be just the two of us. Next week, we are welcoming, welcoming back host number five, Eric Rude. Eric Rude is coming to talk to us about things that matter to you, which is the 2020 Lemons Race and Rally Schedule. Ooh, uh, the race schedule is out? No. Well, not yet. Exactly. He is coming on the show to announce it. And this is great. Uh, he's not going to be Wait, at the Texas Rally. Is that like an exclusive? I feel like it is. The, 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 the... show exclusive! Yay! So if you want the jump, 
Or if, honestly, if you want to know what tracks they're going to, he'll talk about the new tracks. He'll talk about the old tracks. He'll talk about – there's still a couple that haven't gotten back to him yet because those tracks are just – their their schedule is always a little historically difficult. Uh, but, yeah, Eric's going to be on there to talk about. And honestly, the one we everyone or a lot of people care about is that season opener down at Barber every February. We all love it. It's a great great race to go to. And uh, we'll probably be talking about the, the, sh- the race that we're going to try to do away from – the East Coast for the four of us to get together to see if we can hop in a bunch of different cars and go have fun. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, to say that I'm there for next week's podcast is kind of silly because, of course, I'm there. <laughs> so, ab- absolutely. I'll be joining us live from Louisiana. So, we're hoping to bring that uh, bring that together. And I don't think we've ever had a bad show with Eric on. No, not at all. So, We'll say to him, just like we say to everyone else, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this skinny week's edition of <laughs> Everyone Racers. The half as good? Ha- half good? I don't know. Uh, we hope you enjoyed Half this. the host, of- twice half- the value. Lots of fiber. Lots okay. of fiber in this episode. We hope you'll join us. Everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe it's usually better it's totally free then go to (laughs) itunes and give us a five-star rating even if you hate us and tell us why if you have any questions or show ideas drop a comment on our facebook page everyone racers or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com find us on instagram or twitter at everyone racers thanks again and until next week keep the shiny side up Unless, like us, you don't have a shiny side, then just keep the wheels down. Thanks, Will.